All right, great. So hold on. Hi guys. Morning, everyone. Hi, Rabia. Uh, we're very pleased to have you here with us today. Hello. Uh, so a, a short introduction, um, short bio about Rabia. Rabia is a sales and soft skills trainer. He's a public speaker and a pitching coach. Uh, he's trained more than uh, 8,000, uh, 5,000 entrepreneurs, corporate employees, and director across multiple industries in the MENA region. Uh, he also coaches uh, TEDx speakers on the content and delivery of the talks, which inspired him to write his first book titled uh, Public Speaking X, How to Unleash the TED Speaker in You. Uh, so Rabia is going to be with us uh, today to uh, give a training session on how to pitch. Uh, we're very excited for this session and uh, the, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for that. Hello everyone. Hope you are well. I know I've been told that you are working very, very hard on your pitch decks and your pitch content. So I guess our session today entitled how to pitch comes at a very timely moment as we prepare for the finish line. My name is Rabia Al-Khudur. I am a sales and soft skills trainer, graduate of the University of Leeds and of an institution that uh, Mona and I hold very close to our hearts, which is the American University of Beirut. Recently, uh, I've started a YouTube channel uh, under the title of The Confidence Builder, where I share public speaking tips and speech review videos uh, to help uh, budding communicators and aspiring public speakers to really hone in their craft and become better speakers. So I hope you can give it some time to check it out. Uh, I'm really excited to be with you today because this is one of my favorite topics uh, to train on. Uh, I've helped uh, hundreds of entrepreneurs across the Middle East and around the world to prepare for their entrepreneurial pitches. As for today, we're going to help you uh, hone that skill of pitching for the social innovation project that you have been so uh, diligently working on over the past few days. So my question to you is, and I need you to unmute your microphones to answer. Are you excited? Yes. 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 Sure. All right. We need to work on the synchronization effort, but I can feel the excitement. <laughs> Thank you so much. So for today's session, I have a lot to cover. We're going to do it within a relatively short amount of time, giving enough time for you to ask any questions you might have or giving you time to finish your preparations as I finish my content. Uh, before we get there, uh, just a few reminders of the session logistics. I'm sure you're Zoom experts by now. Uh, just remember to raise your virtual blue hand in case you want uh, to share a comment, ask a question. That way I would be able to give you the floor. In the meantime, everybody would be muted to make sure we avoid distractions. Uh, and please feel free to write in the chat at any moment in time during the session. I will be having a close eye on the chat window, so I'd be able to address any of your comments or questions in real time, inshallah. So in terms of headlines for the day, we're going to st first start talking about content in case you want to fine tune your flow of ideas before the actual final pitch. We're going to then talk about body language and vocals, probably the most important aspects of this afternoon when you're going to pitch your projects. Next up, we're going to talk a bit about slides. Uh, you might not be able to uh, change your slides at this moment in time of the competition, but for future reference, it could be something useful for you to know. And at the end, uh, small remarks related to the online virtual medium that we are all in today. So public speaking is usually something that we do on a stage in front of an audience where you can feel the energy. Online, it can be a little bit different, sometimes a bit more challenging. So I'll be giving you some uh, tailored tips to help you prepare for the virtual pitch that you're about to deliver this afternoon. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna begin by a question that I would hope you can share with me, a one word answer in the chat. Share, share with me your answer in the chat. And the question is, what do you think is the most important concept in communication? When you think of the world of communication in general, what is the most important thing in communication? Type in your answer in the chat. So Daniel is telling me body language, saying listening, being brave or confident, I presume, body language, understanding, eye contact. All of these are very important concepts, absolutely. Respect, content, still trying to find the word I'm thinking of. To give you a hint, it starts with the letter P. The letter P, any guesses? What is the most important concept in communication? Well, pitch, obviously, because we're going to do it today, yes. 
presence, pronunciation. I'm surprised at the speed through which you found words that starts with P. Well done for, for that. The word I'm looking for is perception. Can anybody explain to us what perception means? Either raise your hand or type in your answer in the chat. What does perception mean when it, when it comes to communication? The way we see things, yeah, absolutely. And that is important because you will be pitching to a jury. Disclaimer, I will be a member of the jury. All right? So those jury members will be seeing something about your pitch. It would be the way you're going to speak. It would be your slides. And it's based on our perception that we will grade you and we will pick a winner. What does that mean? It means you might have the idea very clear in your mind, but the moment you're going to start pitching, your performance might be a bit fumbling. And this is what we will see as jury members. We will see a fumbling performance. We will not be able to see the clarity of the idea that you have in your head. So this is why communication can be cruel sometimes. And this is why we're doing this session to give you some tips and techniques to help you uh, reach a level where what we are perceiving is actually what you intended on delivering so that there is a, a sort of same wavelength situation. All right. So keep the idea of perception in mind for everything we're going to talk about today in short. So let's begin with content. Public speaking in itself is a wide skill. You can have so many public speaking activities, one of which is pitching. So pitching is a type of public speaking activity. Does anybody have an idea of how to define the activity of pitching? A short definition of pitching. What is the activity of pitching in your opinion? So the idea of selling is very important. Absolutely, we are selling a product, a service, or in today's case, an idea. Yes, presenting a new idea, absolutely. There are two words I want you to remember when it comes to pitching. I'm going to write them for you in the chat, OK? So Nada is starting to allude to it, the idea of presenting it in the shortest amount of time. So the first important aspect of pitching as an activity is to present something quickly. The element of time will be very important. And for today's pitches, you will have having four minutes to deliver your actual idea. Some people might consider it as a short amount of time. Others might consider it as a long amount of time. But four minutes usually fly by in public speaking. And when Danielle is saying catching attention, the second word that I want to put the spotlight on is to be efficient with our public speaking. Since we have a short amount of time, every word we're saying, every idea that we are building upon should be carefully crafted. There isn't room for us to have lengthy general introductions when it comes to pitching. We need to get to the point as quickly and efficiently as possible. Okay? So pitching is a unique public speaking activity. And that time that I've told you about, I want you to remember the, um, the time measurement of the first 30 seconds. Okay? Usually, those 30 seconds at the beginning of your pitch will give the, the jury members in this uh, example, we will get a sense of how well you will do. And typically, people will form a relatively durable perception of how well you are as a speaker and how good is your idea during those first 30 seconds. So it's important for you to really hit the ground running, as they say. Start strong, start confidently. Uh, and don't worry, even if you don't start as strong as you want, as long as you finish strong at the end, you'll be able to save the day. But of course, if you start strong and you end strong, it would be a much better uh, performance that will be better perceived by the jury member. So please remember those first 30 seconds from a body language perspective, we'll, call, we'll talk about it later. And from a content impact perspective, make sure you hit the ground running. As a reminder, please, if you have any question or any comment anytime during my session, feel free to write them in the chat or to raise your virtual hand. 
The problem with everything that I told you about is that little thing we call stress. And typically, when there is a pitching competition, the nerves would be at an all-time high. Uh, we want to make sure to do well. We want to make sure not to disappoint our team members, etc., etc. And when we get stressed, there is a tendency for an event to happen in public speaking in general or in pitching in particular. And that thing is called rambling, the event of rambling. Any ideas what rambling means? Have you heard of that word before? If you can define it for me uh, in the chat. What is rambling? When somebody is rambling, you, got, you have a hint in the picture that I have on the slide. So going on and on, nerjuf as in shaking. What else? So there are three things really when it comes to rambling, talking quickly and making not, yes. So we are not making so much sense. There are three elements related to rambling. Uh, the first one is um, in terms of the actual output of words, we, have, we are speaking too many words, okay? So the actual volume of words is a lot. The second aspect of rambling, in okay, words is yede, those extra words that we're talking about, they're not really adding meaning to my communication. I'm not getting anywhere new with my ideas. And the third aspect of rambling, you know, it takes too long. Time-wise, I'm turning around the same idea and I'm not getting closer to finishing. Okay? A, a common problem when it comes to pitching Let's say the competitors have four minutes to pitch. And typically, for somebody who is stressed, who is not well prepared, or who wants to focus on the problem too much, they spend the first three minutes introducing the project. And what do they end up doing in the last minute? They try to scramble and rush everything in that final minute. That's not good. Okay? So in order for us to avoid rambling, we're going to have to develop a proper structure for our pitch. And I know this is something that you probably worked on already in terms of content. Just keep that strategy in mind. It could serve you in order to create that difference when it comes to the jury. I'm going to share with you a structure on how to begin your pitch. Remember those first 30 seconds we talked about? This is an example of a structure for those first 30 seconds to catch the attention of your jury members, of your general audience. Okay, this is tested and proven, so entrepreneurs have used it successfully over the years. Uh, you might have done your uh, pitch similar to it, it might be different. Don't worry if it's different, there are multiple ways to begin a pitch. Okay, I'm going to share with you this technique. The first aspect of starting a pitch is to start with the problem, directly with the problem. Okay, no general introductions directly start addressing the problem. And you're gonna see here between brackets, I put the word awesome. Let your problem be awesome. Now, unfortunately, in the English language, the word awesome these days have, has taken a, a diluted meaning. So you can talk about a cup of coffee is awesome, or this new TV show is awesome. When you think about it in the English language, the word awesome is something that inspires awe. A volcano erupting in front of you, is awesome. You watching a tsunami wave coming to the shore, this is awesome, okay? So when you were gonna talk about your problem, what I'm trying to tell you is this, make it big. Let your problem be big in the minds of your audience. Because when you do that, if your audience perceives your problem as big, then your audience is going to perceive your solution as worthy as well, okay? So when you're gonna talk about the problem, make it awesome. After the problem, typically what do we talk about? Very quickly in the chat, I know you know this. After problem comes the solution, right? Okay. In this technique, before we get to the solution, there is a suggestion to actually talk about the need first. Why do we need to solve the problem? Because here's the thing. Typically, when you're gonna share a problem with an audience, whether the jury members or an audience in general, some people in the audience and some jury members 
will be skeptical not really sure and your problem is really worthy so i'm putting i'm crossing my arms and hey this is the skeptical they would look at you they would turn around and say, mm, i'm not really convinced this is a problem hmm? for these people and for whoever has an idea and mm, i'm not sure that this is really a, a, an awesome problem this is where the need becomes important you tell them we need to address this problem and you can do it two ways Either you can do it in an optimistic way or you can do it in a pessimistic way. Let me explain. I'll start with the pessimistic way. If we don't address this problem, look at the disasters that will happen. You're appealing to fear here as a persuasion technique. And it's a very popular technique. It will depend on your public speaking style, the focus of your project, to decide whether to choose to go optimistic or pessimistic, but both work, okay? So if you go pessimistic, you talked about the problem, and when you're gonna talk about the need, you're gonna say, if we don't solve it, look at the negative consequences that will happen. If you choose the optimistic route, you will say, if we solve the problem, look at the wonderful opportunities that will open up for us. Look at the beautiful, positive consequences that will happen, etc., etc. okay? So both, uh, techniques uh, beautifully uh, translated by Sara in terms of targhib tarhib, absolutely. So both work in terms of reducing the skepticism and the listener giving you the benefit of the doubt. And okay, keep going. This is where you're going to wrap up your introduction now and you're going to do something called defining your solution. So this is where you actually talk about your solution. Here, very briefly, in one sentence. So I talked about the problem, the need to solve it. Now I define my project, in your case, as uh, in one sentence, as if you're writing a tweet about it, okay? So project X is, and you define it very briefly, very quickly. Those first 30 seconds are over. At the end of those first 30 seconds, after the problem, after the need, after the solution, what will happen with the audience? They are at a crossroad. The audience is at the crossroad. Either they're going to decide, hmm, yeah, this is not interesting. I'm not going to focus mentally anymore. Or what we all hope for, they would say, hmm, interesting. I will keep on listening to that speaker for the next three and a half minutes. Okay? So this is really the objective of this introduction technique to hook our audience, our jury members, so that they stay with us until the end of the four-minute pitch. Okay. Do we have any questions so far at this stage? Does everything make sense? I'm assuming since you're tweeting about it, it is, or God forbid, you're tweeting about something else. I will figure. I will find out later. Okay. Cool. Now, a word on persuasion. Since we talked about tarhib, uh, the positive, the optimistic, and the pessimistic approach. In general, if you want to be persuasive as a public speaker, I want you to remember three key concepts. When all of them are together, you're going to achieve persuasion. The first one is to present a logical flow of ideas. Your pitch needs to be logical. We need to feel that you're moving from point A to point B, and it makes sense. Okay? Logic is very important. And some people prefer logic to the other components we're going to talk about remember however that all three need to be together okay so the first one was logic the second one is to prove your credibility as a speaker this is very important you can be very logical in your ideas but unless you prove that you are capable of uh, achieving this project you have experience in the field of your project we will not really be convinced by you so you need to prove without showing off, and don't show off at all, you need to prove that you are credible to talk about this project. Mention experience that you have, mention research that you did, mention the passion that you have for this idea, anything to prove that you are credible, anything that will make you sound uh, trustworthy to me. Okay? So with logic and with credibility, the third element that we really 
uh, elevate everything are emotions. So showcasing some emotion throughout your pitch performance it will be critical for you to be convincing. And when I say emotion, it could be any emotion. So it could be uh, happiness, it could be fear, it could be anger, it could be frustration. Any sort of emotion is something that would be captivating for your audience. Have those three elements together, logic, credibility, and emotions, and you're gonna have a higher chance of being persuasive vis-a-vis -vis your audience. And to be really, really memorable, if you want the cherry on top of the cake, the X factor sometimes, uh, when we're gonna have to listen to eight pitches, the one that we will remember probably the most, will be the one that will have a storytelling aspect to it. So either your pitch includes a story, your entire pitch is a story, or you in your delivery, you were like a storyteller, a hakawati. Any of these elements will boost your memorability factor. We're gonna remember you better because it has been scientifically proven that human beings are wired to share and receive stories. It, it is the most optimal form of communication that we register very well in our minds. Our minds are wired to share and receive stories. And think about it from your own experience. When somebody is giving you, a university instructor, let's say, is giving you a normal lecture with the facts compared to another university lecturer who gave you anecdotes from their personal experience or stories to illustrate some of those theories. Which one will you remember more? Probably the stories. I remember from my days in, in AUB, I had a lovely uh, international development uh, instructor who told us as an introduction to his course on globalization of how he used to go to Turkey, Istanbul every summer to try and find out the best lahme ba'ajin in town. And that was an introduction to an international development course. I still remember it X number of years after. I'm not going to tell you how many years. Okay, so when you are going to share a story that is well crafted, people are going to remember it. Okay, if we have any questions, uh, any comments that you'd like to write up in the chat or to share via audio, now is the time since we finished our first uh, headline related to content. Any questions, any comments? Three seconds have passed. I think we're good. So let's continue. I have a question. Yalla, go ahead. Who is this? Uh, it's Sarah Malaab. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm my blue hand, so that's why I couldn't. No worries. So uh, basically, I have a question which says, you know, before minutes, do you think it's a good idea that two people out of the group uh, do the pitch? Well, it's important to stay involved, my best one person. Personally, out of professional experience, definitely only one person so that the entire focus from a speaking perspective and from a listening perspe perspective doesn't get disrupted. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you out of experience, when you have two or more people speaking, it's basically a performance. It's like a theater play. And theater plays requires rehearsal. It has to be really perfect in terms of the speaking cues, when to speak. So within the short time frame that you have, I would much rather have one person speaking. Well, Akid, I'm presuming as part of the competition, there might be guidelines pertaining to the number of speakers. So make sure to check, check that. Okay, public speaking best practice, I prefer one person. Uh, optimally in the Q&A, the rest of the team could be involved. Be confused All right. that All right, thank you. Pleasure. Anybody else? We're good? All right, so remember at any point in time, raise your hand or type in the chat and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Now, the pièce de résistance of today's session, so one of the important aspects that all of you might be stressing out uh, on, which is the actual delivery. So let me demystify it to you and share with you some practical tips to help you prepare for the actual pitch. So that first part of our session today was, was talking about words, and words are important in public speaking, but it's definitely not only about words when it comes to public speaking. Words constitute an important but small portion of your communication impact as a communicator. And it's all due to this guy. This guy is called Albert Mehrabian. 
He is an American Armenian uh, political uh, co communication instructor, instru instructor uh, in California in the U.S. And he is the godfather of modern communication through his um, gold standard study on the elements of personal communication. Uh, some of you might uh, have heard of this uh, formula, 55, 38, and 7%. Um, a lot of people don't agree with it, but it remains the gold standard. So it is the conversation starter on everything related to communication. What did Albert Mahrabian want to find out? He wanted to see, uh, as human beings, how much weight do we give to a person's body language when they are speaking to us? How much weight do we give to his or her vocal performance? And how much weight do we give to his or her words? And it turns out that the majority of the importance is on the non-linguistic elements. So 55% for body language, yes, Sara, and 38% for the vocal performance. Now, that doesn't mean in the words are not important. It's not like you're going to stand in front of the jury in the afternoon and you're going to say, blah, 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 but you say it in a nice way, and yes, we're going to make you the winner. No, you need to say something that is worthwhile. However, if you say it in a flat, boring way, that's one performance. And if you say it in an engaged, interactive, confident way, that's a completely different performance. This is what this formula means, okay? And a very good question from Mona, does this formula apply in virtual env environments? It will never be the same as when you are really exchanging energy with a live audience. But yes, it does also matter in a virtual environment. And we're going to see in the tips, we'll be talking about one after the other, how to apply this formula to a virtual uh, setting. Okay? So we're going to go through elements of those uh, uh, body language and vocal performance, one after the other. The first of which is posture. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm standing as I'm delivering this presentation to you. And one of the tips pertaining to the virtual environment that I will personally recommend to you is for you to deliver your pitch while standing. Any ideas why, in your opinion? Why am I recommending for pitchers to be standing? So in terms of posture, it could be perceived as more powerful. We would be able to use body language more, professional, voice and breath, absolutely. Uh, typically, when we are seated, we slouch. Our entire energy becomes very, very uh, lazy. When you are standing up, you're taking energy from the ground. Your body is on alert. So you are basically uh, realizing that something important is happening. You'd be able to straighten your shoulders. You'd be able to look straight into the camera. And you would convey a lot of confidence compared to you slouching and hunching at your slide and looking at your slide while seated. Okay? So, personal recommendation, be standing up. Uh, we'll talk about the setup of the, of, of the computer and the laptop, how to optimize it for you standing up. Uh, but please do make sure to uh, consider standing up to convey that sense of confidence. Okay? Um, we'll be talking about audio in a minute as well. Uh, one tiny problem related to standing up, you know, some people might take it as an opportunity to release their stress by shuffling their feet left and right. So imagine as a jury, I'm going to have to listen to eight pitches with people going left and right. By the end of the eight pitches, I need to go to the restroom because I would be falling sick. Okay? So make sure to stand firmly in one place on the ground. Okay? And remember the first 30 seconds we talked about? Those first 30 seconds, yani, your introduction, make sure to not move. Okay? One person standing firmly, speaking, and then if you want to move, you can move a bit in front of the camera or to really relax the weight of your body from one foot to the other on occasional basis. Okay? So regarding the, if one, more, more than one person can pitch from the team, we address this question, preferably, one person to pitch, and everybody else in the team can be involved in the Q&A, okay? So uh, Hussain is asking something about eye contact. We're going to address it right now. Um, it's related to, yes, okay. So 
Here, this is a direct implication of you pitching in the virtual environment, the idea of eye contact. In a typical public speaking setting, you'd be gazing around the room to make sure that you are engaging everybody through your eye contact. Here, you don't have people in the room unless your family will, will be with you on the side of the laptop cheering you on. But even so, you, do, you shouldn't look at them. The best practice in a virtual environment is really to look at the lens of the camera. Okay? It will feel weird. You're looking at an inanimate object. But for you to convey the feeling of eye contact to a jury and to a virtual audience, it is critical for you to look directly into the lens. When you do that, the other person at the receiving end is going to feel that you are looking at them. Okay? Now, one pro tip. You know, in Zoom, there is that floating window whereby you can see yourself, you and another speaker, or everybody together, right? As a speaker, personally, I like to have that window open first to see the faces of the participants. Uh, that would give me a sense of an audience, but also to check myself out to see if everything is going as planned. Meaning, I want to see how you guys are seeing me. Okay? So, in order for me to do that, while still conveying a sense of eye contact, looking at you, giving you an impression of eye contact, I keep that floating window very close to the camera lens. So right now I'm looking at myself. Right now I'm not looking at the lens, I'm looking at myself. But it's still giving me the sense of eye contact, right? Look what will happen if I put the window in the corner, the bottom left corner of my screen. So right now every time I'm speaking to you, I want to make sure that everything is okay, what's happening to my eye, my eye gaze. I'm looking away from the lens and it is distracting, okay? So make sure to keep the window where the participants and yourself uh, are appearing close to the camera lens, okay? Since we're talking a bit about the technical setup, there was a question about audio. Personally, I prefer the, um, the actual um, uh, earphones that, are, that, that have a cable simply because they would limit my movement. So I would be able, to be able to stay firmly placed on the ground looking into the camera. Uh, and also it's better audio quality compared to the wireless or Bluetooth technology that could sometimes have a hiccup or break up, all right? So for personal preference again, make sure to have uh, um, an actual cable earphone. I'll, mind you, it comes with the risk. Sometimes I get too excited in my workshops and sometimes I fling the actual cable and it could hurt my ear. So discretion is advised. Be careful with your gestures. Uh, but other than that, if you are close enough and you have enough slack, in order for you to speak comfortably, it should be fine. All right? Speaking of hand gestures. And... and Professional public speaking with a live audience, there's lots of room to do hand gestures. Uh, there is still room to do hand gestures in a virtual setting. And here it's important again to see yourself how you're appearing in the frame to maximize the impact of your gestures. Okay? So when you are looking at yourself in the frame, you're going to notice that there is empty space around you. Okay? You can use that space to create hand gestures that are impactful. So for example, on the one hand, on the other hand, I'm using the space around my head to convey two cont uh, contrasting points through my hand gestures. If I want to enumerate something, I can use the space to enumerate something, all right? Uh, you can take a step back as much as the audio cable allows, and you would increase the space around you. That way you can convey better uh, hand gestures. But usually, in principle, it's better for the top of your head to be close to the top of the frame, and you use the remaining space for hand gestures. One thing to be aware of when it comes to hand gestures, please, avoid something that is called, and we can write it for you in the chat, avoid something that is called negative patterns. A pattern is something that happens a minimum of three times, and it's negative because we will no longer be focusing on what you're saying, the words, and we'll be focusing on the pattern. 
So very typically, when some people are stressed, one big example of a negative pattern is involuntarily slapping your hands and clapping your hands whenever you are speaking. So by now you are not focusing on what I'm saying and you are starting to count how many times I'm clapping my hands. And maybe some of you are considering, okay, will he reach 15 or 20 times, etc. Okay? Sometimes when you are stressed, subconsciously without realizing, we do those negative patterns. It could be anything. Clapping the hands, fixing the hair. Sometimes it's also words. You can say the word okay 5,000 times within four minutes. So what will happen in the mind of the audience? We're going to fixate on the word okay, starting to count how many times, okay? So I just said okay right now. Now I'm being conscious about it. So try to uh, uh, figure out what sort of negative pattern you might have while under stress. Your team members could help you. Uh, and once you're conscious about it, this is the best way to actually defeat it. One more thing with regards to um, vocal performance before I get into the specifics of vocal performance. This is very important for the Q&A part. So if you're worried about your Q&A performance, focus on this part. Sometimes, even most of the time, the Q&A performance will be more important than the pitch itself. Okay, The pitch is important, but unless you actually nail your Q&A performance, Sometimes your Q&A performance might be synonymous with your, de with your demise. Yani you would lose that first spot that your pitch performance was promising you because of uh, an average Q&A performance. And a lot of it is related to your spoken tone of voice. There are three tone of voices to avoid in public speaking in general and in the Q&A in specific. The first one to avoid is being passive. No, okay, whatever. Because typically what happens during the pitch, you are, you're fired up, four minutes, you're really intense, and then should we see it? Not for the engine. We shut down our engine. So whenever somebody is asking us a question, we answer in a nonchalant way, passive. You know? Yeah, sometimes we answer in one word, you know, yes or no question. We don't elaborate. Leila, no, khalas, mukhna sakkar. Our brain shut off. This is to avoid. Another thing to avoid, is sometimes when you are really excited, it could be perceived as aggressive. So when I say aggressive tone of voice, this is aggressive. You give that fired up reaction. And sometimes in a pitching Q&A performance, when somebody is asking you a difficult question, you might feel attacked. So you answer in an aggressive way. We need to avoid that. It will be negatively perceived by a jury. The third one is a cocktail to avoid when you are passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to find out if you are passive aggressive or not is when a jury member asks you a question and you begin your answer by saying, as I said during my presentation, مجرد ما تقولوا هذه الجملة شو عم بتقولوا عنه للجوري ممبر? As I said during my presentation, yeah. Well, you have a word in your head. Okay? So, when we are perceived as passive-aggressive, not only it's unprofessional, but come in, it gives me an indication of your state of mind. You're not good handling criticism. You're letting your emotions get the best of you, etc., etc. Okay? So, three things to avoid. What is the best spoken tone of voice to have? Is to be assertive. And kun hazimin. When we are assertive, it means that we are confident in our content, ready to discuss it, and cool while under fire. And remember, juries, they want to challenge you. They want to see if you really understand your project, if you really took time to address all the possible uh, weak points about it. So you need to be ready to face those difficult questions. And the best way to appear confident and professional and at the wadood is to be assertive, okay? The other thing I would recommend you to be is conversational. Not only in your Q&A, but in your entire pitch performance. What I would conversational, avoid being 
uh, a one-way communicator. Be interactive in your content even. Asking rhetorical questions that don't require or wait for an answer. Being playful with your audience. Involve us in your presentation. Okay? When you are conversational, but you're having a cup of coffee with your friend while talking, this will make you more relatable. We will appreciate you more as a communicator and as a speaker. Okay? So, to wrap up this part, specifics about the vocal performance. One of the worst things you can do as a vocal, vocal performer is to be monotonous, speaking in the same tone of voice. So, you need to change up your performance all throughout by feeling what you're saying. Yani put feelings and emotions behind the words that you're saying. Imagine me at the start of this session, I was telling you that I'm excited, right? So, imagine if I told you, um, Hello, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here today with you. And this is a very happy occasion because I am really proud of the efforts that my team and I did. And we hope that the project will excite you as much as it is exciting us right now. We're not going to buy it. The word is excited. So you need to showcase excitement in your vocal performance. Okay? Next up, the speaking rate. How fast or how slow you are speaking. Some people speak faster than others. Visual speakers in the room, you know who you are. We need to slow down a bit. Some people speak slower than others. Kinesthetic speakers, we really like to think about what we want to say. In a four-minute pitch situation, we might need to speed things up. One of the best ways to regulate this is through the art of pausing. Okay? When you know strategically want to pause during your pitch, you're going to create that uh, sense of excitement that is unfolding in your pitch. Okay? So I would recommend you, as you're rehearsing your pitch performance, to so actually rehearse the pauses. Know when to pause. Because a pause could be a transition between one idea and the next. A pause gives your audience time to think about what you are saying. A pause helps you take a breath before continuing speaking. And a pause can help you create that element of suspense. So when you're going to say the, word, the name of your project for the first time. So we are very happy to announce to you Project X. I took a one second pause that created that sense of anticipation. Now, some of you might be asking, hey, but Rabia, we have only four minutes. Can we afford having pauses? I would tell you, do not have content for four minutes. Have content for three and a half minutes, three minutes, 40 seconds maximum. And use the remaining 20 to 30 seconds for pauses scattered throughout your pitch. That would make for a much more relaxed delivery. And we would be able to follow. Okay? Mind you, you need to know when and for how long to take a pause, okay? Mafi kuntkuna in your actual presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Rabia. Hwani pause manna zabta abadan. Your heart is in the right place, but manna zabta. Okay? Make sure there are mostly transitions between one idea and the next, and you're good to go. The stress as we're going to get closer to the event. I would recommend that you do a very effective breathing exercise, which is called deep breathing. Uh, some of you might be familiar with it. If you have a smart watch, you might have a module within the watch that activates deep breathing. Uh, some people have apps on the phone for that. It's very simple. So four seconds, you inhale from the nose. Seven seconds. You hold your breath, and eight seconds, you actually exhale from the mouth. Okay? There are lots of videos online you can f figure out the technique. It's very simple. You put your hands on your, uh, the top of your rib cage and on your uh, belly, and you're doing that to make sure that your belly is inflating during the inhale and then deflating during the exhale. You might not be able to nail the technique rapidly, but if you do the seconds at least, uh, and inhaling from the nose, exhaling from the mouth, it can be very soothing 
to help you relax. Just please make sure to do it before the start of your pitch. Yani when the camera is off. Okay? Any questions so far? Now's the time to ask a question. Yes, I have somebody who've unmuted their microphone. Please introduce yourself. I'm sorry, again. Yes. Uh, thank you for the tips. Uh, I have a question which uh, says, is a, a team. Do you recommend you know, some people uh, display the slides yeah, other than the person who is doing the pitch? Well, it's the same person who should be in contact with Mali. And I come in another personal and professional recommendation. I would much rather the person who is in the hot seat, يعني الشخص اللي مسلط على الأضواء, هو يتحكم بالpresentation. لأن when you are depending on somebody else and you're live and you cannot really communicate with them to tell them if something went wrong, um, it might lead to a chaotic situation. So I would prefer the person delivering to actually handle the slides themselves. Again, this is a personal recommendation. All right, thank you. All right. Very cool. I can see that uh, F and F Lebanon are mentioning me on Instagram. Thank you for that. Keep going. Uh, third highlight of the day. Uh, I'm going to go through this quickly because you might have submitted your slides already, just for you to keep in mind for future reference in terms of building slides. And you could use some of these tips actually for the delivery as well. Uh, one very important aspect that we're going to begin with is that your audience is here to listen to you and not to read. This is really the basic mantra in public speaking. So if you have a lot of text on your slides, try as much as possible to let your audience focus on your actual spoken words and not on uh, whatever is written on the slide because as visual uh, uh, human beings, we are always going to be attracted to something that is creating a visual stimulus for us, okay? So focus on speaking uh, impactful content rather than speaking plastering content on the slide for people to read. When you're going to choose your visuals, your images, let them speak, let them be beautiful, let them be aesthetic. Of course, let them be high resolution. Uh, try as much as possible to have minimal text to as little text as possible on your slides. And each slide, let it focus on one main point. Lots of points to cover in one slide. In terms of design, um, so great, you have until 12 o'clock to modify. So some of these steps might be useful for you guys. Um, there are some design principles, even if you are not as a designer that you can apply for your slides, okay? These are very useful in order to maximize the visual impact of any slide that you prefer. The first one is the idea of balance. When you think of your slide, it has multiple visual elements. Place them around the slide in a way that would make the slide balanced, okay? The next is proximity, meaning elements that are similar to each other, put them close to each other. So all the text next to each other, the picture, somebody somewhere else. This will make it easier for the human eye to go through the information quicker. Number three, the idea of alignment. This is probably the most popular one and the most widely used uh, because of the templates uh, in presentation. So for example, when you have bullet points of text, there is this idea of alignment that is created thanks to the bullets. Repetition also is very helpful because you are not going to, uh, you're basically going to help the brain of your audience members to uh, figure out what's happening, happening on the slide quicker. So they don't have to think a lot about trying to understand what's happening. In my slides, for example, in this slide in particular, you see the element of repetition happening and the image staying where it is. So there's a new image uh, appearing every time a new bullet point is appearing. This is an example of repetition. Also very important is the aspect of con contrast. Contrast can be in the colors. The best two colors that have the highest contrast, what are they? The best two colors for contrast, any ideas? What I will know, Ahsan contrast, it's black, black and white. And white. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So, if you're going to write text, best to write black on white background or even white on black background. Uh, choose your colors wisely. And even the contrast can be in your choice of pictures. So, if you look at the picture that I have in front of you, this picture has contrast. We have a matchstick that is not lit versus a matchstick that is lit. Uh, contrast is intriguing for the human brain. 
one last element that is critically important when it comes to actual um, uh, slide design is the element of space. Do not be afraid of empty space areas on your slides. Those empty space areas could actually help you put a better focus on the visual element that you have on the slide. So if you take a look at the picture here, thanks to the space that is within the picture, your eyes are focusing on the hero of the picture, which is the user using the iPod. Okay? So some, some design professionals call it negative space, and I like to call it positive space, because it is positively highlighting the important visual element on the slide. Okay? In all cases, simplicity wins always. Less is more. You don't need a lot of visual elements to convey an idea. And remember something. There is the slide, but there is you speaking as well. There are two outputs of content that are coming to your audience. So you don't need to put everything on the slide. Put enough on the slide, and then your vocal commentary will complement what is on the slide. Okay? What you're saying or what you're showing with what you're saying will give a full picture for your audience. Also remember that you are in control. And Zakar Sual Nashway about if somebody else handled the slides. The reason why I prefer the speaker to handle the actual slides because you are in control of the actual uh, flow of visual prompts. So you decide when to move from talking about simplicity to talking about being in control. You can sync the change of slides to whatever, whatever it is you're seeing, and that creates a more wow factor. Your audience is going to perceive your presentation as more professional. Before we get to the last part uh, and then begin the lengthy Q&A question, uh, anybody has a comment, something to ask right now? We're good? Okay, so let me segue real quickly on the online, some additional tips to help you maximize your virtual pitch performance. So when it comes to the online medium, try as much as possible to position yourself close to a source of indirect light. What do I mean by that? If possible, try to find a location within your home, within your office, wherever you are, that is first private, uh, that is soundproof, and that has a big window. Position your laptop in front of the big window. That's what I am doing right now. In front of me, I have a big window. What will this do? It will have the indirect sunlight project its light on your entirety, and it will be the closest thing to professional lighting. This view for you, it's much nicer uh, and uh, smoother to your eyes compared to a view where I have artificial neon light uh, turned on in the room. Okay? So whenever possible, be in front of a window for indirect, uh, for a source of indirect light. We talked about this earlier. Make sure that your camera is at eye level. This would be the best way to convey eye contact to your audience. Try to find whatever you can to elevate your laptop while it being stable in order for the camera lens of your laptop to be in front of your eyes. So Anna, right now, my uh, setup is a series of old comic books that I used to read while I was a teenager along with my backgammon table, Taut al zahr a laptop stand, and my laptop. I've used all of these to elevate my laptop. Try to find a similar setup to make sure that the uh, camera is at uh, the eye level. And additionally, like we've mentioned, if possible, if you're comfortable with it, present while standing to take energy from the ground. Otherwise, uh, try to figure out a setup while sitting down where at least your back is straight and you are away from the laptop. So no slouching in front of the camera looking at your slides.
In the end, what we have in front of you is an image of audience members being captivated by the performance and delivery of a speaker on stage. Trust that you can recreate the same reaction in a virtual audience. You don't have to be standing on a stage uh, with a physical audience in front of you to create public speaking magic. You can still create that same effect virtually. Two things for you to remember. Make sure you finish speaking before your audience has finished listening. So that requires you to develop really crisp content that is logical, that showcases your credibility, that showcases some emotions so that we stay with you till the end. And always, always remember, there isn't anyone you couldn't love once you've heard their story. So on the emotion side of things, do not hesitate to share a bit about yourself throughout the presentation or the pitch in order for you to be more relatable for your audience to really connect with you. And most importantly, have fun with your pitch performance. You guys have made it till the end. It was a fantastic opportunity, I presume. You've made new friends. You're working on something really, really valuable and really, really important. So you might as well have fun delivering it in order for you to leave the actual pitch performance without any regrets. That's very important. I'm open for your questions and for your comments. And also, I would hope to listen to as many of you as possible telling me what is the one thing you remember from today and what is one thing you'd like to commit to for your pitch performance this afternoon. So we'd love to hear from you on that. And in addition, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them. I'm all ears. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much, Mr. Rabi. Um, I have two people who are uh, unmuted. Who is speaking right now? Is it Sarah again? Um, no, it's Nima. I said Sarah again. Okay, so Nima, but then Sarah. Go ahead, Nima. Uh, I want to thank you first for uh, this amazing training. It was really great. Uh, one of the things I think we'd like to commit to in our presentation is making it more personal because, as you said, uh, we receive stories in a much better way and uh, it will basically deliver the idea um, more clearly. So thank you. Pleasure. Do you have any questions? I uh, no, not at all. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So anybody else with the one thing they remember or one thing they commit to? And if you have any questions. I remember the statistics, the 55% of body language and the 38 of the 7% of the content and the Lahm Bajin story. Uh, right. It was very, thank you for the presentation. I think one thing I'm going to commit to is uh, the placement of the laptop. I'm going to make sure and I'm standing. It will make a huge difference. Thank you so much. Uh, Rewa, did you have your hand raised? Apparently, we cannot raise our hand, Mombari Flay, for me. I have, I have Mahdi who is raising the hand. Yes, Mahdi. Who is speaking right now? Is it oh, Mahdi? Oh. Okay, so I have, uh, I have Nada and Mahdi, but we're going to start with Mahdi. Go ahead, Mahdi. Thank you very much. This, uh, but I have the question, Mabar, because you mentioned that no, I skipped. But uh, I want to make sure I share the background. Uh, for example, I couldn't afford the solid background for example, every person wants to be a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, even in a garage, for example, especially when I'm at home. Uh, do, is it fine to be in my life, for example, if I'm not very good with my outfit, or my, outfit, or my, my skin color, or if I'm in my room, or a cell, or something, even if I'm not wearing it, I mean, I don't do it. Well, is there a background that we should stick to? Lake Hot Barad was still a and for me, you're a winner. Now, if you manage to pull off your pitch performance in the kitchen, that, that's a really solid performance. Um, thank you for the question, very important. Uh, several things for you to keep in mind. I will see the most important thing is to preferably be in front of the source of indirect light. Yani what would matter for me the most is what is in front of you, yali, alayna, compared to what is behind you. Now, that would make you look better. That's number one. Once you cover that, number two, with regards to the background, try as much as possible to limit or reduce distractions in it. 
So I don't know if you've noticed, lots of people when they are appearing on Zoom, they, they like to uh, choose, for example, uh, the cozy living room in the home or the bookcase with lots of books. Uh, or sometimes they don't realize you know, within the bookcase, uh, they have a, a weird sculpture or the toys of their child that is stuck up there. So what will happen for us as audience members, you know, we're going to be captivated by the toy. You know, what the hell is this baby monitor doing here? And it's actually blinking. So the baby is crying, you know? So try as much as possible to choose a background that has minimal distractions. And uh, last point, if you end up being uh, with a wall with a specific color papier peint behind you, you need to choose your outfit color to match the papier peint. So as a papier peint is orange, not the best t-shirt orange, it's different. So it's something for you to actually really consider in terms of uh, designing your appearance. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you, Mahdi. Can you find anyone that was in line? Nada. Nada, right? Yes. Yes. I wish to thank you for this session. Interesting. And I actually started to stand out the session uh, as a speaker. Hello, in this light, where I am, I am going to be. I really wanted to say that we put the icon and show us under the camera. I was not doing this. And now I feel that I am talking to you directly, and you are standing in front of me. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I have until 11. Make sure not to leave any questions or comments uh, unanswered or unheard. Uh, uh, if you want to share with me your pitch strategy, if you have something you're not sure of, I'm here to help. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, uh, Jihan. Would you recommend you know, more than one person to pitch or only one person? A very popular question always. Uh, per personal and professional recommendation is for one person to pitch. Uh, who, uh, try to choose the person that is most comfortable with the content, the person that, ha that is most comfortable in English, and the rest of the team can be involved in the Q&A. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you, Jihan. So for rehearsals, any tips? Um, I'll answer that question and then I'll give you the floor again, man. Um, when you're going to finalize your content, try as much as possible to um, limit changes to your content um, to a specific time frame. And you have until 12. At 12, خلص, the content is finished and you focus on rehearsing your delivery until the actual pitch time. For rehearsing the delivery, I would recommend going about it in a one-two approach. One being reciting the content alone, and two being reciting it with the actual slides. The reason why we're doing that is for your brain to be comfortable with the content alone, so that when you have the slides in front of you, you have more uh, maneuver room. You are better allowed, you, you better allow yourself basically to uh, uh, improvise if needs be, I feel more confident with sharing examples or anecdotes along the way. I would feel more empowered about your content. So step one, try to deliver the content without the slides. Step two, uh, try to deliver it with the slides. Um, for step one, without the slides, uh, try to have a camera opened on the laptop. So if you have a MacBook, for example, you can open Photo Booth. Uh, on Windows, you can open any camera uh, related uh, application just so that you see yourself uh, pitching to uh, cover the body language aspect of, of the things we talked about. Um, Mahdi, I have another question at chat, but then I'll come back to you, I promise. Uh, how much do we focus on delivery versus content as judges? Uh, our Sheikha disclaimer, in any competition, you can never really lo know who the winner will be because every jury makeup is so unique and different. Okay? Some jury members, um, and by their nature, they prefer to focus after on the content. Others, they focus after on the delivery. So you're going to have a mixture. In principle, everything will ultimately depend on the judging criteria. And I believe that everybody is now aware uh, within the participants of the judging criteria for this competition. So try to make sure you nail 
the judging criteria from a content perspective, that would be very important at the starting point. And then the delivery would be a cherry on top of the cake, something that will make you look more confident, look more professional, sound more memorable. Uh, so uh, even though Anna, as a public speaking uh, coach, uh, I am usually more fascinated by delivery, I would tell you in a, a pitching competition, it is very important to stay close to the brief, which are the judging criteria, and to focus primarily on the content and then on your delivery. Uh, Mahdi, the floor is yours. Thank you once again. And this all first the language. And during the process, during the representation, as mixed mixture of languages and here English or here Arabic. So do you think in the watch it's stick to one language uh, well that's better than you have both languages I can ask them to for the audience to grasp. I have a soal then it's also the appearance of Obama and I can realize that you can enter this is a very personal matter during a pitch, which looks more professional, more comfortable. So what do you think on high and high note? All right, I got the gist of both questions. Just be, be sure to, uh, to have a better connection during the pitch. I know your voice is breaking up. Rahbalish uh, bitane soal li huwil appearance. Ana la ekhir fatram tawal shaarati akhtar min al aadi. Is that I stand in front of you the way my hair is wa tafi is subuh, bi sir maakun sakta al bi. All right, so it's always better to groom your hair when it's long, to groom your beard when it's long, so that it is. It's looking sleek, okay? It's more professional that way. Unless you have a diet pantini, 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 perfection. So you have a diet pantini, you have a diet When it comes, the first question was related, is a man of a man of a I had it in mind, but then I thought it. So the second question was appearance. What was the first one? Language, yes. So thank you. Um, this is very cultural. Uh, us Lebanese, we greet each, other's, uh, each other by saying hi, kifak, sava. So moving from one language to the other comes naturally to us. What will always be important in a public speaking situation is to speak the language that is understood by your audience. So in this case, you're going to have jury members that do not speak Arabic. So the idea of shifting between English and Arabic would not be recommended unless you feel at one point and you're stuck and you need to say the word in Arabic, you could say it as long as you translate it immediately afterwards. This would give a sign to your audience and know you are uh, uh, caring, you are professional, and you want to make sure that you are understood. You are not disregarding them. Okay? Um, sure. Before we forget about it, uh, about researching the judges. So this is also very important. Uh, you know who the judges will be. You've met one of them today. Uh, I think you met also some of them earlier in the program. So if you research their profile, get to know them uh, you might benefit from that because you might refer to something in their uh, career history, something related to their person during your actual pitch performance or during the Q&A. And when, you do, when you're gonna do that, a judge is going to feel impressed and wow, they did the research. Wow, they know about me. And that could, whether consciously or subconsciously, affect your grading. So uh, there's uh, definitely uh, no reason uh, not to research uh, your judge uh, panel. Uh, in a way, come in here, you would get to know them. Because you would feel that you're speaking to people that you know, compared to feeling a sense of dread and, oh my God, I'm speaking to um, uh, strangers. Okay. Um, I think the audio. 
Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask أحيانا وقت نكون عم نعمل pitching بنبلع ريقنا كثير فبيطلع voice that's not good يعني ما بنكون بالانس فهيدا الشيء I'd like to know about So أنا دائما حد مني في ثلاث أربع أناني مثل هاي especially when I deliver long sessions In your cases, you're going to deliver something that is relatively short for four minutes. So I would definitely recommend that you hydrate yourself immediately before your pitch and to leave a bottle of water next to you in case of really emergencies. Um, in terms of the bala, uh, it's a problem that you have recurrent and you know in the bala عندك ممكن يكسر الإزاز أدمنه قوي. Be comfortable with having the mute button close by. هيك ساعتها what can you do? إذا حسي إنه في بلعة جاية أو ماي جاد حتكسر الدنيا فا as you're speaking تكون أنت أخذت moment of pause طرقت الميوت بلعت البلعة تكسر الإزاز حواليك بس ما حدا حيشوف لأنه قدامك وساعتها بترجع بتعملي unmute وبتكملي حكي فا it requires a bit of practice a bit of being comfortable with the commands of the laptop and of Zoom so that it becomes smooth وما حدا بينتبه ساعتها does that make sense؟ yes thank you pleasure then Anybody else? And I want to share like, a small anecdote. Um, two years back, I was uh, pitching in Dubai. Uh, it was maybe my second pitch ever. And, and I am an instructor at university, but pitching is very different. I get very stressed, very nervous. <laughs> So the idea is that I met two of the judges um, of my session, uh, maybe one hour or max two hours before the pitch. And uh, one of them was like, you know, giving us a workshop. The other one, we had an informal conversation. And I like I directly could understand what, you know, how they think, what they're interested in and what's important for them. And I remember that although I have memorized my pitch as, recommended يعني, by experts in um, pitching. I knew that I had to change at least the intro and to plug in some of the words that they needed to hear in order to maximize my chances in winning. So this is what exactly, يعني, this is exactly what I did. And for the next hour, I was simply like, you know, changing the pitch in my head and going over. So it was an exhibition, like rotating around and like just, you know, Uh, saying it out loud and saying the new words and honestly it worked really well and um, those two voted for me as you know the, the rank one and I ended up uh, being second in the competition so I cannot recommend يعني, enough understanding who your judges are and you guys are at an advantage and you've already met the vast majority of them Uh, so you have to make sure that your pitch resonates with what they want to hear, what they believe is important. And uh, this will definitely improve your chances because although we have judging criteria, although we try to make this as objective as possible, however, know from somebody who's been in many pitches um, as an organizer and as a judge sometimes that judging is subjective. Yeah, no matter how objective it is, it will still be a subjective process. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Mona. And uh, uh, on the idea of subjectivity, uh, there's something that I've learned over the years is that uh, you're going to feel more convinced by people you like. And we don't, I'm not saying that romantically, the like aspect, but if you feel that you're with a person, and what they tell you is what they try to you're going to somehow feel more compelled to believe him or her simply because of the likability factor. So you can increase your likability factor by building that rapport with the judge uh, panelists, judging panelists, and uh, in that way, maximize your chances of a positive review, definitely. Anybody else? We're good. Shall we give you some time to start hitting the ground running and finalizing your presentations? I guess we're going to do that. So allow me to thank you for your time. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, speaking with all of you. But Mahdi, عنده سؤال ما عنده سؤال شو؟ بلا في سؤال خاصة بالترينينج شوي. يلا جود. Okay, do you recommend training at them عالم نعرفه ولا عالم strangers يعني هلا نحن وانا ترين. Do we train at them or teammates اللي بيعرفوا نحن عن شو عم نحكي ولا مثلاً نجيب أختي مثلاً نترين at them وهي ما عارفة نحن عن شو عم نحكي. 
at, at minimum, train in front of people that you know uh, is that that's the only option that you have, uh, just for the sake of uh, getting comfortable with the content. Uh, if it were a physical live event, I would tell you no air training in front of strangers is very, very important. Not so much in front uh, for, for a virtual event. If anything, I would highly recommend that you rehearse in front of the camera lens. During the actual pitch. So make sure you're comfortable with the camera lens, looking at it and having the setup uh, well set up for you. Yeah, I just want to add on rehearsals, guys, that we have put some time. Uh, for us as mentors and for the peer mentors to be with you during rehearsals so uh, you have the chance also to run this through you know one of our team before the actual pitch and we will tell you our sincere critical <laughs> and sometimes not so nice you know feedback and yeah take it constructively all right so thank you everyone for your time i look forward to listening to your pitches this afternoon i wish you the best of luck and remember to Make the best of it, enjoy it, and have fun with it. Uh, below on the left is my, uh, are my social media handles. You can check them out. Um, I'm mostly accessible on Instagram, but available on other platforms. So if you're tweeting, feel free to tag me as well. Um, also remember, the confidence builder on YouTube. Uh, after the recent tragic events in Beirut, we're after Shui Productions. Uh, but hopefully, I'll get back on track soon, and uh, videos will be popping once uh, every week, مثل ما بلشت with the channel. Uh, check out the videos that are already there. Let me know what you think. And thank you for supporting a local content creator. Karen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think I saw you in the, in the, in the when you, you had your camera on and your face does look familiar. I'm telling you, every time I make it unique. Thank you for this vote of confidence. This is reassuring me that uh, I am still on top of my game. Uh, I look forward to seeing you bring out the best public speaker and communicator in you this afternoon. Uh, ما بخفى عليكم